Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington. This volcano is best known for its huge and disastrous eruption on May 18, 1980. This photograph comes from photographer Robert Landsberg, who of course was in the area at the time of the eruption. Before the eruption, he had visited the area in order to photograph and document all of the changes that were happening. On May 18th, he was within a few miles of the volcano when it erupted. Since he unfortunately was located so close to the explosion, he knew he would be unable to escape this disaster, so instead of focusing on the impossible, he focused on taking as many pictures as possible. Robert was obviously incredibly brave and dedicated, but also very smart. After snapping as many photos as he could, including this one, he then secured his camera in his backpack and covered his backpack with his body. He knew he was unlikely to survive, but wanted to make sure that these photos did. His body was found 17 days later with his backpack still underneath him. His film was of course, um, his film was of course developed and has provided geologists with some really valuable insights with his close documentation of the eruption. In our number 9 spot today we have The Core. This photo shows a physicist named Harold Agnew and while this looks like a relatively normal non-threatening photo, what he has in his hand is truly devastating. Harold is holding the nuclear core of what was nicknamed the Fat Man Atomic Bomb. This means that Harold is holding the nuclear core of the atomic bomb that was later dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. The immediate blast of course took many lives, but so did the long term effects of the bomb like radiation illness and that sort of thing. It's crazy to look at a photo like this because it seems just so perfectly normal when he literally has a life changing world ending device in the palm of his hand. Also I don't think I could ever hold something like that. Not only would I just like not want to, but I would just be so afraid that something was going to go wrong. In our number 8 spot today we have the Challenger crew. This is a photo that was taken of the clearly very excited Challenger crew as they walked down the ramp ready to head off on their mission. The crew even included 37 year old Krista McAuliffe who was a high school social studies teacher. She had won a spot on this mission through a program with NASA called the Teacher in Space program and she had trained diligently for months in order to be the first non-military person in space. On January 28th, 1986, the Challenger mission proved to be fatal just 73 seconds after liftoff. Two rubber O-rings failed because of the cold temperatures of the morning and on live television, the world watched as the spacecraft broke apart and plunged into the ocean, sadly taking the lives of everyone on board. It is an absolutely tragic event made even more chilling by this final photo. In our number 7 spot today, we have the plague. This photo comes from the 19th century from the third plague pandemic. This was the first time that the plague had spread to all five continents. While we now know something about what that might have been like, what we haven't had to endure are the doctors that dressed like this. This is a photo of the outfits and masks that plague doctors wore when they would come to your house to treat or diagnose you. The long beak like noses of the masks are very creepy, but they were used to hold herbs and other nicely scented things because they believed that it would help ward off the bad air which at the time is what they thought was causing the sickness. A pandemic certainly is bad enough, thankfully our doctors and nurses are just sticking to scrubs. In our number 6 spot today we have the elephant's foot. This photo looks like it's just a big lump of nothing but it's called an elephant's foot. Don't worry at first I was a little worried too but it has nothing to do with elephants and is only named that because of its appearance. This lump was actually created from the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown and it is just a mass of corium and other materials that were in the core of the reactor. This elephant's foot was located in the steam distribution corridor which is under what's left of the reactor. While this mass doesn't produce as much radiation as it did before, it does still to this day produce a deadly amount. It is said that if you stood in front of it for just 300 seconds, that would be enough to get a lethal dose of radiation. It's kind of crazy that even though they knew this, they were still standing there taking pictures of it. But I'm just glad because we all now get to see it and it gives us just a little more insight into what exactly happened that day. In our number 5 spot today we have Mount Pinatubo. This is a photo that is showing Mount Pinatubo 
Manitoba, which is located in the Philippines, on June 15, 1991. That is the day that this volcano erupted into what would be the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. Certainly impressive, also extremely terrifying. This photo shows the pyroclastic flow full of hot gas and rock being flung into the air. Eruptive activity in the volcano first started on April 2nd of that year, which prompted researchers to set up seismographs in the area. By June, the volcano was having a group of progressively shallower eruptions before, on June 12th, the volcano had its first spectacular eruption, which sent an ash column 19 kilometers up into the atmosphere. After more highly gas-charged magma reached the surface, on June 15th, the volcano once again exploded, this time sending the cloud of ash 40 kilometers up into the atmosphere. Volcanic ash and pumice blanketed the surrounding area, and pyroclastic flows filled what were once deep valleys with fresh volcanic deposits. It was truly magnificent and extremely powerful, and this photo shows just that. In our number four spot today, we have the Pioneer's Defense. This photo is known as the Pioneer's Defense, and Man, does it ever look creepy. This photo comes from 1937, and it was taken by a Russian photographer named Viktor Bulla. This photo takes place in the Leningrad area, which is now known as St. Petersburg, which is the second largest city in Russia. The people in this photo were part of a group that was the 1930s Russian equivalent of our Boy Scouts, and it was called the Young Pioneers. The masks on their faces leave a very eerie feeling, and for a fair reason. These people were doing a military preparation drill, which is the reason for the gas mask. This photo was taken during a time where the country was under the dictatorship of Joseph Stalin, and the residents were constantly unsure of what was going to happen. The country was already seeing death, and people were already frightened just a few years before the start of World War II. In our number three spot today, we have the lipstick. This is a photo that comes to us from December 10th, 1945. If looking at this image gives you a shudder down your spine, that absolutely makes sense, as it was written by a terrible person known as the lipstick killer. This photo is an image of a note he left written on the wall at one of his crime scenes. The photo comes from the apartment of Francis Brown, as just before he wrote this message, he took her life. After this message was left, he ended up taking the life of one other person before he was finally caught by police six months later. The message scrawled in the photo reads, quote, for heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. It is an absolutely chilling note with a horrifying backstory. In our number two spot today, we have the acid drum. This photo comes to us from inside the house of another terrible person, the serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer, made very famous recently. This photo was taken from the inside of his home after he was found out and caught by authorities. Before his arrest, he was sadly able to take the lives of 17 different people. Although this photo might look kind of plain, the horrors are plentiful. This shot shows a drum full of acid that was located inside of his home. Probably don't really need to tell you what it was used for. I can't imagine the horrors investigators saw when they entered his home, and even previous to that as they investigated his crimes. Thankfully, Jeffrey was caught, and in 1992, he was sentenced to life in prison, but just two years later, he was killed by a fellow prison inmate. In our number one spot today, we have the Dyatlov Pass Incident. If you have never heard of the Dyatlov Pass Incident, you better buckle in, because it is so terrifying. This photo was taken in February of 1959, as nine young Soviet hikers sent out to trek through the Ural Mountains. They had set up a camp, and some time during the night, something happened that made them cut their way out of the tent and all flee the site. Leaving in such a rush, they were of course underdressed for the bitterly cold weather, and six of them ended up passing away from hypothermia, which is extremely tragic. The other three, however, is where this story takes an even more frightening turn. Like I mentioned before, no one knows why they fled the tent in the first place, and the last three hikers were found passed away with severe signs of physical trauma that no one agreed on what had caused it. In 2019, the investigation was reopened, and just last year there was a conclusion that a kind of avalanche called a slab avalanche was the cause for these injuries. Before you come at me in the comments, I know that not everyone is convinced that's what happened, and I don't blame you. It's really strange. So, down below in the comments, let me know what you think. Let's solve this mystery once and for all together in the YouTube comments.
Regardless of what happened, this whole incident was of course very tragic, but the mystery behind it definitely takes it to a very spooky place. Number 10, the isolator. The last thing anybody wants to do after the almost, almost two years we've had? Ugh. Though this looks like an object perfect for deep sea diving, it was actually built for desk work. Hugo Gernsback was a Luxembourgish American inventor, writer, editor, engineer, designer, businessman, and of course, magazine publisher, because why not? add one more thing to the list he's really good at. He started a magazine called Science and Invention which encouraged scientific and amateur experimentation. This was one of the inventions published in the magazine and was revealed in July 1925. The main purpose was to block out all of the noise from the surrounding environment, narrow the field of view like horse blinders to improve concentration. But don't worry, there was an oxygen tube attached to help out the studier so you know you could you could breathe while you're reading about Shakespeare or something. Number 9, Kang Guru boxing. Link here. This next one looks pretty self explanatory, but also it's very confusing at the exact same time. Kangaroo boxing actually became pretty popular in the 1800s. In both Europe and the United States, clowns and professional boxers would square off against marsupials in front of herds of people. It was actually started by a university professor just like as a joke and then it really caught on. Who they cheered for? One can't be certain. The man in the above photograph was sparring against a kangaroo in Germany in 1924. Obviously, the sport did not continue as it was considered abusive to animals who clearly had no idea why this hairless being was all up in their space and trying to beat them up. I don't understand. This is just ridiculous. Number eight, children shipped in the mail. Picture here. Sounds ridiculous is ridiculous. But did it happen? Of course it did. However, this picture was actually staged, but this actually did happen. Imagine your sister calling you and telling you your nephew is visiting, and then minutes later the doorbell rings and your nephew is just like chilling with some packing peanuts in a cardboard box. Well, not quite. The postman had to play a kind of babysitter a bit. Shortly after package delivery, a revolutionary thing on its own, was introduced, a couple in Ohio sent their infant son to their grandmother's via post in 1913. It cost 15 cents plus $50 insurance. Once this oddball story got out, the trend caught on. Regulations were vague about what you could and could not send via post. So why take a bus when you could take a postman? Rural townships also usually knew their postmen really well, so they'd be like, oh come on Joey, here's 15 cents. Take little Timmy to my aunts. I don't know. So they trusted them, they weren't just passing them off to strangers. However, eventually new regulations came out banning the practice. Finally, because it's just weird. <laughs> Number seven, mummies for sale. Considering the frenzy that people get into when archaeologists discover a new mummy, you might be surprised to learn that this picture is actually a street merchant selling mummy merchandise of actual, actual mummy. During the Victorian era in the 1800s, Napoleon's conquest opened the gates of Egypt to the Europeans, making mummies a really hot commodity. <laughs> like, imagine somebody. Bury, like uh, uncovering your aunt and going, ooh, we could sell her. Weird, right? Like thousand years from now? They could be purchased from street vendors, just as you see from this photo. The Euro elite used to even have mummy unwrapping parties, which is exactly as it sounds and not what you would expect people to do with a corpse. But even weirder than that, people actually thought ground up mummies had medicinal properties. It was so popular that it even instigated a counterfeit trade to meet the massive demand man for magic mummy ground stuff. What did the counterfeit trade involve? The flesh of beggars instead of mummies. All that behind one picture. Number six, half and half. This next one actually has a kind of sad story behind it, but paints a very clear picture of the division between Catholics and Protestants and actually just religion in general. This picture depicts two graves in the Netherlands, one belonging to a Protestant and the other a Catholic. In 1842, a 22-year-old Catholic noblewoman fell passionately in love with a 33-year-old commoner, a colonel in the cavalry who was also Protestant, a big no-no. Their marriage was a total scandal, but they said screw you to their peers and stayed together for 40 years. The woman's husband died in 1880 and to forever unite them, she built a grave that would forever keep them together even though they were apart by a wall. The old cemetery was strictly divided into Catholic, Protestant, and Jewish sections, so these two monuments were built so they could forever be together. Does anybody have a tissue? Number five, Leo the Lion. Believe it or not, you've seen this lion before. In fact, 
You've probably seen him many times while watching your favorite films as a kid and even now. The lion in the photo is the one, the only, Leo the lion, the majestic beast who roars the MGM logo, like the old one. Leo the lion was the regular star of MGM since it was founded in 1924. The first MGM lion was called Slats, not Leo, and he actually didn't roar, he was just kind of like looking around, it was more like a gif. But Leo is actually the most familiar roar, like everybody knows what he sounds like. But who is the man having tea with such a lion? Well that of course is Alfred Hitchcock, the king of thrills. This photo was taken in 1957 of the two legends posing to enjoy a hot cup of British tea. Number 4, Walter Yeo. Though the picture itself is a little disturbing, it signifies a life changing moment for Mr. Walter Yeo and also for thousands more. This was one of the world's first plastic surgery procedures. Walter Yeo had suffered a dreadful accident while manning the guns on the HMS Warspite during World War I. He lost both his upper and lower eyelids in the event. A year later, however, he met Sir Harold Gillies, who would be considered the father of plastic surgery. His idea was to take skin from another part of Yeo's body and place it over the area in like a mask-like shape, as you can see in the photo. Dr. Gillies then went on to carry out the surgery on 5,000 injured men from June 1917 onward. And thanks to his work, thousands of people have benefited since the years of the war. Yeo himself lived until he was 70 years old. Number 3, the Dinosphere. The car of the future that really never made it there, and we can see why. Every car we have today has four wheels, not just one. Some have more than that now, it's getting confusing. But in the 1930s, J.H. Purvis had a vision. He called it the Dinosphere. It was a large wheel with a cabin in the center for the driver and the passenger to sit. Funny enough, it did actually work. Check this out. But did anyone else notice the problem with driving it? Yeah. You have to drive like Ace Ventura with his window open because it broke, you know what I mean that scene? Exactly. In order to see past the giant wheel spinning in front of you, you have to kind of rubber neck it out to the side. JH made two prototypes, one ran on gasoline and the other ran on electricity. He even designed a kind of bus version that could fit more passengers, but it still needed mini stabilizer wheels, so it had like six by the end of it. Do I kind of want one though, because it looks fun? Absolutely. Would I want to take it on a road trip across Canada? Absolutely not. Number two, the Hindenburg disaster. Based off the title, you already know that this is a picture of the Hindenburg disaster because I already said it. Spoiler alert. The Hindenburg was the largest dirigible ever built and it was the pride of World War II. Yeah, see, Germany, you know which one I'm talking about. The, but YouTube gets mad. The first successful airship was constructed in 1852 by Henry Giffard, but the problem was he used hydrogen. This made both French and German designs of the craft susceptible to explosions if something went wrong. Hence, exhibit A. What you are seeing in the photo is the direct aftermath of a devastating accident. Um, May 6, 1937, the dirigible touched a mooring mast in Lakehurst, New Jersey, sparking the explosion, which took the lives of 13 passengers and 21 crew members. Something as simple as a small spark from the engine ignited the hydrogen core, and the craft fell 200 feet to the ground in flames. And last but not least, number one, spectators. This is the photo taken at the trial of Al Capone. Yeah, it suddenly makes a lot of sense as to why people are covering their faces. When someone says to you 1930s gangster, Al Capone probably jumps into your head. He was deemed public enemy number one by the US government for bootlegging and other illegal rackets during prohibition. The terror the ruthless gangster incited in the city of Chicago is evident by this image. Witnesses and spectators of the trial covered their faces so they wouldn't be recognized by Capone's vengeful accomplices or Capone himself. Behind those fedoras may lie other criminals yet to be unmasked, or civilians scared of a Tommy gun waking them up at night. Either way, you know he must have been one terrifying dude. Authorities did everything they could to catch him, but he would always slip right through their fingers. Finally, his reign came to an end in 1931 when they caught him on income tax evasions of all things that landed him an eight year sentence. Number 10, Russian Bigfoot caught on tape. The exact location of where this video was taken is still unknown. In fact, there isn't a ton known about this video at all, but what is known is that it was taken somewhere in Russia. That's about it. And people actually believe that it captures the real Bigfoot or one of the many Bigfoots out there. This is the Russian one. They got a Russian Bigfoot. What do we all think here? I wanted to start 
start with one of the most insane videos I could find. I think I nailed it, how'd I do? I don't know. This one comment dives in further. The user says, the title of the original video was called Chichuna, but in Russian script. The creature hops, sometimes sideways like a lemur. Of course, lemurs have tails, which make that type of movement easier. And Chichunas are sometimes described as having tails, but this creature doesn't appear to have one, does it? No, it looks like a, a blob of scariness. I don't even know. The original footage was in all Russian and claimed to have been shot in Siberia. It also featured a boy and a dog in the foreground who didn't appear to be all that concerned, but I still believe this footage to be genuine. That's one of the top comments, so. You know, someone did their research. Number nine, overnight visitor. Oh, this one definitely gives me the chills. I don't like it. This video was taken from a surveillance camera that was placed inside of a couple's home. Not outside, inside. This is scary. And this, I hope this never happens to anybody watching this video. The footage caught something while they were both asleep. And it's one of the creepiest things that I've ever seen. When the couple woke up the next day, they were unable to find a purse that they knew was in the home right before they went to sleep. So they decided to check their security cameras and this is what they found. As they were sleeping, a man crept in and was so quiet that he didn't wake them or their dogs up. No, he stood at the top of the stairs watching them sleep for a few minutes, which just adds another layer of Ew, to this whole scenario. Yeah, always check those nooks and crannies before you go to sleep, I guess. Number eight, Titanic inspection card. This inspection card once belonged to a woman named Marion Meanwell. What could possibly be creepy about an inspection card, you ask? Well, it shows how Marion was not intended to be on the Titanic, but by some turn of events, she unfortunately found herself as one of the passengers that went down with the ship. Now, the card shows that she was originally meant to be traveling on a ship called the Majestic. For some reason, the trip she originally had planned was delayed, and she instead was assigned to the ill-fated Titanic. Yeah, you can see the word majestic is literally crossed out of her card. You know, adds to the creepy element because it shows her literal change in plans. Number seven, Norway lights. Natural light phenomena is common in our big, beautiful planet. The northern lights, the green flash, solar eclipses, you name it. I bet those were all pretty alarming back in ancient times. Now, some of these natural events look otherworldly. They look cosmic, almost. Most of the time, there's an explanation waiting but for the mysterious glowing orbs floating over Norway, the Hasdelen lights, as locals call them, we still need some answers. Scientists have been trying to gather research, and in 2014, after many impressive light shows, their best guess is a natural battery that charges underground, and then emits this light show above. Maybe this has something to do with the uh, reoccurring lights over Phoenix. Could be the same phenomena happening, who knows. Number six, the cool time traveler. Do you believe in time travel? If your answer is no, maybe this next one, maybe it'll change your mind or keep you open to the concept. It's a common theme in movies, Back to the Future, Loopers, Avengers. Time travel plots are fun, but they're absolute nonsense. Or are they? When we see a case like the Cape Scott story, we can't help but be intrigued a little bit. Time travel or not, this is an interesting photo. It comes from Ray Peterson's book, The Great Cape Scott Story. That book was from 1974, but the actual photo used in the book was taken over 100 years ago. And in the photo, it shows this modern looking guy rocking shorts, maybe jorts, who knows? He has messy morning surfer hair, dippity do, three hold, you know, that kind of stuff. He doesn't look like he's from that time period at all. This also has happened more than once, like the time traveling hipster. I don't know, I'm pretty sure it's my cousin. That looks like a guy I know. Definitely not a guy from the 1900s, that's for sure. Number five, skunk ape. This one is exactly what it sounds like. The skunk ape was seen back in 2000, so hopefully, if it's a real thing, it's long gone. Hopefully it's dead by now, it's pretty gross. Two photos were taken of the supposed skunk ape, and this thing looks like Bigfoot's cooler, older cousin, you know? That cousin who has a lava lamp, does kickflips in the garage in October, that kind of cousin, that's the skunk game, really. An anonymous source sent the Sarasota County Sheriff's Department these photos. They mailed them in, which for starters, that's pretty jarring to receive. Just a creature, just a big foot, put it in the mail. But she claims these photos were taken in her actual backyard and that this creature was not a black bear. It wasn't anything we've seen before. I personally don't think that's a black bear. If anything, it's just a really large, odd looking dog. Those teeth alone are a red flag either way. I want nothing to do with that. Number four, Solway Spaceman caught on photo. Look, we've all been photobombed before. It's a blessing in disguise. You look back at prom photos, some dude sneezing in the background while you're, you know, having the moment of your life. It's the best, we love it. But when Jim Templeton took a photo of his daughter in an otherwise empty marsh, 
long before Photoshop existed. It appears an astronaut just crashed the family moment. He just had to pop up in the photo in the background. Now, Jim assures us that nobody was around, which I believe, otherwise, what a weird photo to take in an empty field. I'd be like, hi, get away from my daughter. Just, yeah, 17 meters to the left, thanks. Also, the fact that this man looks like he's from space. Yeah, that makes it more believable, no? What are we looking at right now? Who is this? It's so, so creepy. Kodak even got involved in this story, right? Like Kodak, the company Kodak. They confirmed this photo was not tampered with and they know everything. They made Avatar, so they know what's up. Let's run everything by Kodak from now on, deal? Number three, Worstead Church Visitor. Okay, time to get a little paranormal. We love those. Hit the lights. Back in 1975, Peter and Diane Berthelot were visiting the Worstead Church in the UK. It was beautiful, right? So like any visitor does, Peter, took a photo with his nice Kodak camera, right? He wants to see the truth with his Kodak. Peter took a photo of his lovely wife sitting in the spectacle of a church, but later on, once the photo was developed, somebody else was all of a sudden in the photo now. Or something, we don't really know. Right on the bench behind Diane, there appears to be a person in all white. How calming is that? Maybe it's a wedding, maybe it's their big day. We love it. When the couple went back to the church to ask about who it was, a local suggested they may have gotten photo proof of the white lady, the spirit of a healer who haunts the church. I mean, as far as surprise ghosts go, that's pretty tame. That's a pretty tame encounter. That's how it should be. Could have been a lot worse. They're like, oh, that's the demon. That's Daryl the demon, yeah. You don't want any part of that. Number two, Black Knight Satellite. Not to be confused with Martin Lawrence Black Knight, that's, you know, although that's pretty historical and memorable in itself, the Black Knight Satellite is something that has been orbiting our planet for God knows how long. We're guessing thousands of years. Everything else on this list is quite recent, but this myth is ancient. This photo here, you've probably seen at one point or another. It was taken back in 1998 during an American mission to the International Space Station. Apparently this guy has been hovering over our Earth just watching us. It's some sort of alien satellite. That's a fun theory, no doubt about it. But during a spacewalk in 1998, one of the thermal covers came loose and drifted away from the station. Could this be that cover that just floated off and wrapped itself around a rock or something? Or it could be a ancient night satellite. One of the two. And finally, number one, the doorbell liquor. Nice, we gotta end with the weirdest thing I've ever seen. This one's short and sweet. Not much explaining to do here, obviously. Does what it says in the can. Back in 2019, a man was caught on surveillance, a doorbell camera, approaching a home in a neighborhood in Salinas, California. He doesn't say much, he just shows up. Doesn't drop off any package, nothing like that. He just shows up and uh, starts licking the doorbell. Not the camera, but the actual doorbell, like the button. He must have rang the bell hundreds of times because he did this for three hours straight. His jaw muscles must be insane. The homeowner said in a following interview after seeing said footage, uh, I quote, oh boy, that is just weird. Yeah, that's what they said to that footage for three hours of a man licking their doorbell. They're like, oh boy, that's weird. If that was me, I'd move. I'd be halfway packing. I'd be like, oh boy, that's weird. Grab a box, let's go. We're moving. Number 10, demonic boy photo. All right, scary as hell right off the hop. It doesn't matter where or when, but odds are you've seen this photo at some point in your life. It's pretty haunting, it's kind of hard to forget. Check it out. You know when you see a photo, sometimes you just get bad vibes, like it registers in your brain as something real and scary. You want to find something about this photo that looks fake, but it's hard. This photo here was taken inside the Amityville house back in 1976, the real house. It appears to be a young boy with glowing white eyes. Kind of, kind of hard to forget. It was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared, so nobody actually took this themselves, it was just set up. It makes it even creepier that the boy looks like he's peeking around the corner. Makes my heart race just looking at that photo right there. A photographer named Gene Campbell operated this and got this photo. See, Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren at this time, the famous duo now rocking the big screen Conjuring Universe. They were on this case in real life. This photo was then revealed three years later on the Merv Griffin Show. Imagine tuning in watching TV on the Merv Griffin Show and then all of a sudden you see the ghost of John DeFeo. That's nice. Yeah, many believe this is the ghost of one John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there prior to that 1974 horrible event. We're still trying to cover this. What do you guys think? Elaborate hoax or perhaps this photo is one solid piece of evidence that the Amityville house was and still is indeed haunted. Number nine, Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. Chris and I actually just talked about video games for like eight minutes straight before we click record, so that's pretty funny. Some of my favorite games always have a similar theme. They always have this post-apocalyptic feel. It's always just 
barren wasteland with like one dog as a survivor and you have to like go and eat scraps. Yeah, Fallout, it's a great game. There's shelters with survivors or even vaults. It's stressful, but it's engaging, right? Searching around. Now in real life, we do have a global seed vault and it's deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. Now in this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault, great name, really rolls off the tongue there. This is where humans will store food crops. It contains 100 million seeds. So if the earth all of a sudden, you know, gets wiped out or even if all the ice melts and it floods and everything goes to quickly, this vault will still be good to go. All that water that just, you know, flooded the rest of humanity will then regrow the earth with all of these seeds, ideally. It sounds like a fun, cute way to get humans to think about the future. You're like, hey, throw some seeds in, make a wish. But I'm concerned. Is there something we don't know? How soon is this gonna happen? Why is everybody involved in this little seed heist? Number eight, Pluto's Gate. Number eight, Pluto's Gate. It rhymes, what's up? Also known as the Gate to Hell. <sighs> Hey, that's horrifying. These runes discovered in Turkey back in 1965 are beautiful, but they're also cursed. Historians believe that the site is the ancient city of Hierapolis. And if you're thinking about visiting these eerie ruins, well, you better leave the family pet at home. Yet yeah, any and all animal that enters these ruins, they also meet instant death. Sparrows were tossed in and then they immediately stopped breathing and they dropped. This was horrifying vocals, so they had to resort to science. Scientists have figured out the solution and it's still pretty haunting. They measured the CO2 concentration and turns out while the sun is up, it burns away the gas. But at night, when the temperature drops significantly, the CO2 becomes heavier than that of air. Then it creates this deadly gas cloud on the floor. And then when the sun rises back up again, the concentration of CO2 hits 35%. So it's deadly enough for animals and sometimes even humans. Yeah, just stay away from anything called the gates of hell. How about that? It's pretty sound advice just to play it safe. Number seven, The Lady of Raynham Hall. This one's a classic. My grandma was still alive, she would have loved this one. If you haven't seen this photo, it's gonna live rent free in your head from here on out. This spirit is said to haunt Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England. Nice. My old home. Not Norfolk, but I have English family. What's up? This tale kicked off back in 1936 after a photo went around through Country Life magazine. I guess that's its way of going viral back then, right? This photo shows a spirit, apparently, wearing a brown gown. Hence where her name comes from, the Brown Lady of Raynham Hall. Just casually floating down a staircase. That's lovely. Imagine seeing this in real life. I'm sweating doing this list. Legend has it that the ghost is that of Dorothy Townshend. She was the sister of Robert Walpole, the first Prime Minister of Britain back in 1676. Some reports say the image is a result of long exposure, just gone awry, but you know. Either way, I don't like looking at this photo. So let's move on. Great. Number six, the Gates of Guinea. Another bad portal to another bad place. The souls of the dead have to go somewhere. And depending on your beliefs, that somewhere could either be beautiful, it could be peaceful, or it could be uh, absolutely terrifying. Who knows, one of the three. In the world of voodoo, that place is an underworld called the Gates of Guinea. And here is the front door. Yeah, located in Louisiana, this tomb, that of voodoo priestess Marie Lavio, is apparently the entrance to these deep waters, this twilight realm. And some voodoo followers try and open these gates to access the souls of the deep. And apparently the goal after that point would be to use the dead almost like zombies, like your own little personal zombie army. So that's horrible, I guess. Number five, backseat driver. This photo here is from 1959 and it certainly looks like it. It was taken by a lady named Mabel Chinnery and the photo at first glance is just a classic 60s shot of a man in a car. That man was Mabel's husband. Now the man in the back seat however we have no idea who that is. Apparently they weren't there in real life. Her husband was the only one in the car at that time. And also, that's a pretty tough angle. If you wanted to recreate this photo with your friends after work, it would be hard. You have to really line something up there. Some Edgar Wright shot has to happen. You know what I mean? It's like he's appearing to us through the seat almost. So either this is a lie, and there was indeed a man sitting in the back left seat, or like Mabel believes, this is her dead mother-in-law. Now, if she had said father-in-law, I'd think maybe it's his spirit, but this for sure looks like an older man with a collar, so we don't know. A lot of ghosts just like to hang around. Honestly, Mabel, just see a priest, just to be safe. Number four, ghost pilot. Oh, this one gives me the absolute creeps. I'm hoping it's just a friendly ghost, but really, you never know. I never know. I don't know. I don't want anything to do with any ghost, but sometimes they're friendly, apparently. Any sort of spirit, I don't welcome. There, I said it. The ghost pilot is a photograph that shows a spirit from 1987, when a woman named Mrs. Sayer was visiting an airfield in England. So of course she did the tourist thing and she got a photo in the cockpit, as we all do. Especially now, if you're seeing Top Gun, I'd be like, yo, get a photo of me. 
But while you're sitting in there getting that tourist photo, do you ever think of who may have sat there before? It's kind of creepy, right? People swear the Titanic was a cursed ship and that spirits were responsible for the ship's bad luck. I personally believe it was the iceberg, but you know, I'm open. Next time you want to sit in the pilot seat, look around for spirits. This image was developed and it appears somebody or something is in the helicopter with Mrs. Sayer. Yeah, nothing like finding out after, eh? Oh. Number three, the specter of Newby Church. This one comes from 1963, so it's a little more recent, but even so, this is one of the most convincing on this list, in my humble opinion. Reverend K.F. Lord took this photo in the Newby Church in England. England's a hot spot for ghosts, eh? Damn. And Lord ensures us that this photo is 100% real. I mean, to be fair, it looks like the spirit is facing the camera, so I don't know. It's a great frame, but I'm still believing. The whole Plague Doctor vibe going on here, that's what makes me feel gross here. Anything with Plague Doctors is always giving me the creeps, so I can't even look at this photo. The figure seems to be standing on the first step to the altar, yet somehow it is still taller than the actual altar itself. We think this being, this ghost, is about nine feet tall, so so whoever faked this, if that is the case, they must have been on stilts or something. Also, stilts and a sheet over your face on a staircase? I don't know, that's, I don't think anyone faked this. That's for sure a very tall demon. Drink your milk, then you'll be tall and strong in the afterlife, just like that demon right there. Number two, the Paris Catacombs. As above, so below is an underrated horror film. It's very good. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Makes you all sweaty and not nice. In the movie, a team of explorers accidentally go too deep when exploring the Paris catacombs, and in turn, they have to face their own hellish nightmare. I'm not gonna give anything away. Well, this is not too far-fetched, it seems. In what feels like a never-ending maze, the tunnels underneath Paris stretch for hundreds of miles. See, originally, the tunnels were built for Paris stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something a little more haunting. Cemeteries at this point in history were starting to fill up. And I mean that in a literal sense, like bodies. It was gross, we didn't know what to do, right? Humans didn't figure out the cleanliness thing for a while, so bodies would be laying on the side of the road. So the solution here was to use these catacombs, right? These tunnels have been there for centuries, so you might as well put them to good use. And by good use, I mean arguably the scariest basement in the world. Just walls of skulls. What could possibly go wrong? So haunted, never going there, so haunted. Do you live in Paris? Have you seen this? Has anyone actually been down there? I wanna hear your account. Comment down below, because that's a scary movie. Movie, man, that's really not great. And finally, number one, Chernobyl. One of the greatest nuclear disasters ever in history. On April 26, 1986, reactor number four at the Chernobyl power complex exploded due to unstable and low power levels. Reactor four had been shut down a day before due to maintenance, and the next day at 1.23 a.m., radioactive debris compiled the fuel and reactor components just rained down all over the building. It's a nightmare scenario. Toxic fumes were carried from the wind, and after just four months, 28 workers had died due to radiation exposure. Eventually, they had to evacuate over 100,000 residents, and to this day, that zone is a no-go. Reactor 4 will stay highly radioactive for another 20,000 years, so no time soon. Let's not head back there anytime soon. Kicking off our list at number 10, floating hand. Okay, this one is so scary. Kill those lights. Let's dive into it, right? This photo is from over 100 years ago. Now, this time, the photographer may or may not have caught a floating spirit hand in their photo. Yeah, I'll show you the photo. Let me know if you see it at first, right? Take a glance. What? What's wrong with this photo? Anything sticking out? Any floating hands just, uh, appearing in the photo. This photo is a group of women who worked in a linen factory. The lady on the far right appears to have an extra hand resting on her shoulder. Yeah, her right, our left. This may be a hidden person, maybe somebody with long arms was out of frame. I'm a lanky guy myself. I can put my arms around like nine of my friends in a photo, I get it. But it's the positioning of the hand that gives me the chills, right? It looks curled almost, which gives it a demonic, insidious, the last key vibes. You know what I'm saying? Number nine. Colossal squid. Not to be confused with the giant squid, those are similar, but dare I say, smaller. Mm -hmm. As its name hint towards, the colossal squid is it's huge. It's one of the biggest things I've ever seen in my entire life. They live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica. These squid are on average 46 feet in length, with the females being the largest of the species. They have large tentacles with suckers equipped with razor hooks, so whatever it grabs, it's certainly not letting go anytime soon. Its diet consists of large fish, and when I say large, I'm referring to a seven foot long Pentagonian toothfish. You know, not like a little goldfish. No, these are colossal. They need a colossal meal. They try and fight whales sometimes. Know what I mean? They have no regard for the size of others, and they're more often than not marked up, suggesting that they've been in a few deep sea tussles, right? Octopus wants to fight. It's my favorite IPA. 
That's the inspiration right there. On top of being magnificent, they're quite mysterious. Only two specimens have ever been collected, with the second being as recent as 2014. Do you believe this is the closest living thing to the Kraken? I don't know, I'm horrified of deep sea creatures, so this list is haunting in my way, okay? Number eight, Island of the Dolls, Mexico. I'm also not a fan of dolls on islands, so pretty haunting. This island is famous, of course, for having dolls or doll parts just spread about all over. Why, you ask? Well, let's talk about it. The islands surrounding this one are inhabited, but this one is said to be filled with demonic spirits, so no one's hanging out, no one's camping, I guess. Specifically, the spirit of a young girl who drowned there way back like Camp Crystal Lake, only creepier, dare I say. These dolls are hanging or nailed to the trees. Now the dolls have to come from somewhere, right? And they came from a local resident by the name of Julian Santa Barrera. He put all these doll parts up in order to try and ward away any demonic spirits, right? He's fighting back by nailing doll parts to a tree. I guess that's, he's a hero. To this day, nobody dares to approach the island. They would much rather snap a photo from far away on their boat, which I totally agree with. That's probably a much better idea. If it didn't look haunted before, it definitely does now with the doll parts. I don't know, great call, Julian. Can you use smudge sticks though? I don't know. Doll parts, that's a bit haunting. Number seven, nursing home spirit. Also, we're gonna throw in some ghosts in this list. So again, hope those lights are dimmed. This photo was taken from a nursing home resident the same night another resident had passed away and they had no idea. This was back in 2015. That night they heard a door open and close out in the hallway but no visitors were allowed there at the time so they noted it. it was you know a little odd. So there's a great amount of people who thinks that this image here is one of two things. One the spirit of the resident that sadly passed away or two it could be the grim reaper. Yeah how scary is that? Both terrible options. A few comments were saying how it's comforting to know that in the end you aren't alone and you know an entity or something will walk you to the other side. I disagree. I think it's uh, terrifying. I'd rather die alone than have this dude break into my home and then walk me to the afterlife. I don't want any Grim Reaper. Thank you. Check out this photo. What do you think? Is this real or is this fake? Comment down below. Number six, Magnificent Alien. While the rest of the world was in panic mode, a new sea sponge was discovered in 2020. How fun is that? Now by fun, I mean Definitely an alien, this is terrifying. It was named Advina Magnifica, which translates to magnificent alien. Yep, magnificent alien, they're gonna call it. This sponge literally gets its name because it looks like E.T. And to be fair, it does look like E.T., it's kinda cute. An ROV found this sample over 6,000 feet deep in the Pacific Ocean. This was never meant to be found, and we did it. They found it in what they call a forest of weird. Just an alien sponge sticking their E.T. heads out hoping for some food to pass by. That's literally their entire life. They just sit there and wait in the darkness until some sort of dust just sticks on them, and they go, and they eat it, somehow. Christiana Castella Branco, the researcher who found this deep sea squishy, explains the discovery in an NOAA interview saying, as all these organisms are intricately connected by documenting and describing marine biodiversity, we are building a better understanding of life and the impact of humans on earth, and in this case, in the ocean, end quote. For a guy like me who doesn't like the ocean or any of the creatures in it, that's terrifying. See ya. Number five. The Shining Hotel Spirit. The Stanley Hotel in Colorado is now, of course, quite famous for its use in the Stanley Kubrick 1980 classic, The Shining. The lodge, being over 100 years old, has a pretty decent chance of being haunted in real life. So the spirit tours that happen there pack a punch for fans of the production and also fans for the paranormal. Jay Mosling was on one of these tours, so like any ghost expert would do, they snapped a few photos of random corners of the room. Gotta catch those ghosts with the flash, it's the only way. After the trip, he was going through said photos and he found this gem. It appears to be a spirit, a demon, a ghost, an apparition, something. Something that's see-through and floating, so scary. It also has long black hair, it appears, so yeah, I don't know what's going on there. The room was of course empty at the time the photo was taken, and I do believe that. There's no way you could just snap random photos of people and be like, oh, I was looking for ghosts, sorry. <laughs> no, that's illegal, you can't do that. Number four. Deep sea pigs. All right, we'll bring it back up to some scary sea stuff. These guys are a genus of sea cucumber, but they have these little tube-like legs, which is why they look super weird and scary. Not that regular sea cucumbers look exceptionally normal, but these ones look even weirder than that of regular ones, so gotta include them. They like to live on the seafloor, where they move through the sediment, searching for their next meal. They eat, check this out, they eat by extracting tiny little particles of organic matter that's just fallen from the surface of the ocean. Yeah, they just wait around for scraps to, 
Again, just land on them. How sad is that? It's kind of funny, but it's mostly sad. Sea pigs measure out to be four to six inches long. So yeah, I guess they're cute, sure, I guess. They're small, so therefore cute. I'll admit it, they're okay to look at. And they live at a depth of somewhere between 1,200 to 5,000 meters deep. So I don't have to worry about any of these sea pigs grabbing my own little piggies, right? They're quite deep, so therefore out of sight, out of mind. They are small, but they're mighty. Their skin carries a natural poison, which can make them a horrible midnight snack for anyone involved. Also, when brought up closer to the surface, they literally disintegrate. So that's a scary fact to know about an animal. Number three, underneath Thwaites Glacier. We've seen some fascinating stuff here on Bumblebee, specifically underwater creatures and haunting stuff from our past. We love exploring the depths, and this next one, I couldn't believe it's actually terrifying to look at. This is footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. This glacier is the size of Florida. If it collapses, our sea levels could rise 10 feet, so it's a pretty big deal. So scientists were like, yeah, let's drill a hole through the middle of it and see what happens. Yeah, in 2019, researchers drilled 2,300 feet right through the middle of the Thwaites Glacier. And they dropped a robot with the camera down and they saw this. This is the first time we've seen the grounding zone of Thwaites Glacier. Lead scientist Brittany Schmidt says this project is a dream come true. And for me, it's a nightmare that I now have to look at. I don't want to watch this video ever again, but you should. It's pretty cool. Number two. Tomb KV-55, classic, going back to Egypt for our Bumblebee fans. Located in the Valley of Kings in Egypt, Tomb 55, otherwise KV-55, was discovered by Edward Arton back in 1907. And the reason we call this tomb by a number rather than a name is because, well, we don't know who or what exactly was inside. Even the walls inside of it, they aren't like other tombs, covered in ancient hieroglyphs or, you know, art or anything nice. No, this time, there's nothing here. The only hint that remains is one hieroglyph. And it's scary, it translates to, the evil one shall not live again. Even these massive stones were built in order to prevent anything from getting out of the tomb. Yeah, out of the tomb. Usually with ancient tombs in history, it's the opposite. Things are, you know, prevented to get grave robbers to come in. This time they're like, no, 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 we don't want anything getting out. That's kind of haunting. Many believe that it's Akhenaten because he got on the wrong foot with uh, you know, the high priests over 17 years of ruling. He was convincing everybody that their art and religion was wrong. And the only God in existence was his sun God. So his own son, King Tut, succeeded him and luckily restored the previous religion back to normal. But yeah, maybe that's why this tomb is empty. Maybe they're like, you know what? We don't want history to remember you. You tried to out religion, so we're good. Number one, house guest. I saved the best for last, and by that I mean this is the scariest thing I've ever seen. This video, yep, yeah, little surprise for you, there we go. This comes from a middle-aged man in Oxford, North Carolina. It was his day off of work and he was looking forward to just kicking back, relaxing, and instead he had to deal with this. Instead, the lights in his home started to flicker, and immediately after, the smoke detector started to go off. The lights were flickering all over the house, not just one room. The fridge light, the bathroom light, you name it. The water even started to run by itself. So something started to go wrong, apparently. And he filmed the happenings, but when he looked back in the footage, you know, after fleeing his home on his only day off, he caught this peeking from the other room when looking back. Pretty terrifying, right? Yeah. Whether it's thalassophobia or ghosts, we're hoping something, one of these photographs, gave you a little scare here today on Bumblebee. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Zone Rouge. This area, also referred to as the Red Zone, is an area of France that is one of the most restricted on Earth. Located in northeastern France, it is said that this chain of uninhabited areas was completely destroyed after the events of the First World War. The area contains a mass amount of both human and animal remains, along with way too many unexpected exploded weapons that have gone on to contaminate the surrounding water and land. This has led to the French government prohibiting any kind of activity in the areas that includes any sort of agriculture or settlement. I mean, I wouldn't particularly want to risk it with an undetonated explosive, so it completely makes sense as to why this area would be restricted. In our number 9 spot today, we have Povelia Island. This small island that sits between Venice and Lido in northern Italy might be familiar to you because of the eerie tales surrounding it. While believers of the Paranormal often refer to it as the most haunted island out there. The real historical story.
stories behind the tales of the hauntings just might back those claims up. The island became a quarantine colony in the 1700s for those suffering from the bubonic plague. That definitely sounds like a bit of a living hell. In the early 20th century, the island instead became an asylum for those in the area who were struggling with their mental health. During this period in the island's history, it has been rumored that many twisted doctors used the island's privacy as a way to practice cruel and inhumane experiments. It is no wonder that after these two dark periods in the island's history, it became abandoned. The island sits empty now, I mean, unless you believe in ghosts, then I'm sure the island is full of them. No one, tourists or locals are allowed to visit without some serious paperwork being involved, so as they say, visit at your own risk. In our number 8 spot today we have Mezgor. This is a location in Russia that finds its home in the Ural Mountains. This little town is top secret and is completely forbidden to any kind of visitor. This is said to be because the town is apparently home to Russia's nuclear missiles and the rules are so strict that people aren't even allowed near the town or in its vicinity. There are also rumors that suggest that this town contains Mount Yamantau and that inside this mountain there is the Russian government's extensive bunker, making this just another reason why the town is completely cut off to anyone who isn't a very high ranking official. In our number 7 spot today we have Snake Island, one of my favorites. This island is located in Brazil and it is one of the most dangerous islands in the entire world and that is because it is absolutely filled to the brim with, you guessed it, snakes. It is thought that Snake Island came to be when the snakes got trapped as a result of the rising sea levels which disconnected this island from the mainland. The reason people aren't allowed to visit is obviously to protect the humans who want to go, but also to protect the snakes that live here as some of them aren't seen anywhere else in the world, likely because of the lack of human interference. There's a critically endangered species of snake called the golden lancehead and on this island there are about 4,000 of them, which is critical to the species being able to continue on. As of now, there are only a few select researchers and the Brazilian Navy who are permitted to go to the island. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. Back in 1986, there was the tragic event of the accidental nuclear meltdown at the Chernobyl nuclear plant. The aftermath of this disaster took many lives and it also rendered the area unsafe for years to come. While some of the areas surrounding the disaster are relatively safe now, there is still an area called the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone which is strictly forbidden because of the radioactive contamination. You would think the threat of a horrible death or at least some painful side effects might be enough to keep people out, but that is not the case. Throughout the years, people have continually tried to sneak into this zone to catch a glimpse at what exactly it holds. In our number 5 spot today we have Morgan Island. This is a place that is also referred to as Monkey Island and this is due to the colony of about 4,000 rhesus monkeys who call this place home. The thing is though, the monkeys aren't originally from the South Carolina island, who would have thought? They were actually relocated here from Puerto Rico. Basically, these monkeys were living in a sort of research center before they moved to this island. But that research center was becoming overpopulated and some of the monkeys who carried infectious diseases were escaping, which posed quite a health and safety risk to everyone around. This is when South Carolina stepped in randomly and offered this completely uninhabited island as a place for the monkeys to go and then they could be researched. There are now laws that prohibit anyone from visiting this island for both yours as well as the monkey's safety. In our number 4 spot today we have North Brother Island. This island is located in the United States on the East River in New York in between the Bronx and Rikers Island. This island used to be the home of Riverside Hospital and back in the 19th century this hospital saw it all. The hospital was used as a place to quarantine those who were suffering from diseases like tuberculosis, yellow fever or smallpox. Definitely all already a grim start, but later the hospital found a new purpose and that was after World War II where they used it to house veterans. After this, the hospital turned into an addiction treatment facility until it finally closed its doors in the early 1960s. When the hospital shut down, it was simply left to lay abandoned. Now the island remains abandoned by humans and is closed to the public because it has found some new residents. The island now serves as a nesting colony for black crowned night herons. Just a random tidbit of information 
info, I guess. In our number three spot today, we have the Fukushima Exclusion Zone. Back in 2011, there was the Fukushima nuclear disaster which struck Japan. Because of this horrible incident, residents located within 18 miles of the plant were urged to evacuate, similar to the Chernobyl nuclear disaster that we already talked about. In fact, this meltdown and Chernobyl's are the only two events to receive a level 7 event classification on the international nuclear event scale. Because of this extreme radiation contamination, no one is allowed to enter the premises. Of course, I can't see why anyone would want to, but there are people who want to take the risk. This includes a 27 year old photographer who decided to illegally sneak into the exclusion zone. He explained that it looked like a real life version of Fallout, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's what it's based on. In our number two spot today, we have the Lascaux Cave. This cave is located in France and it got itself the title of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site after its discovery in 1940 due to the incredible prehistoric paintings that can be seen on the walls. Of course, because of this, this became a popular tourist destination and people were jumping at the chance to see these works of art completed by the early humans, but as it turns out, breathing is not good for the art, which poses quite a problem. The carbon monoxide that visitors were expelling was beginning to cause damage to these cave paintings. And of course, once they're gone, there's nothing that we can do to get them back. This led to the site being closed to the public in 1963. Now, the only people allowed in are researchers and preservationists who work to make sure the art stays for as long as possible. In our number one spot today, we have Metro 2. During the time where Stalin was in power, it is said that he instructed that an underground secret transport system would be built known as Metro 2. This mysterious underground system is said to connect different administrative institutions and it's even rumored that it contains apartments and different technical rooms, sort of like a secret escape tunnel for high level officials. Of course, it's completely blocked off to outsiders or the general public and while the Moscow Metro administration denies that these tunnels even exist, there was an urban exploration group back in 1994 that claimed to have found them entrance. At this point in time, the existence of only one of the rumored four lines has been confirmed and it is called D6.